Mark the Movie Man here, Madison Horror Film Fest for Festival, and I'm here with the legendary Robert Zadar. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Tom? Doing great. Now, uh, I just saw Maniac Cop again recently to, to watch it, and uh, I have to say, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Did you, uh, when you made the film, did you think that it was going to become as popular as it has? Yes. You did. And I, I did because um, I know it's, they consider it a horror film. But the gore to me was done with taste at that time in 1987, and also I, um, uh, it's it's got a lot of build up, which Bill Lustig just did tremendous that suspense thriller type of thing, and then the horror, even though it was a horror film, if you took out the gore, it's really a suspense thriller film, and then but with the mask and the uh, the, the overtone of me coming back, basically. A supernatural type of a character, brain dead. We leave it up to the imagination of the audience. But I, I love all three of the films that I did. Yeah, yeah I, I've enjoyed them as well. I th- uh, could almost be considered as uh, crime thrillers nowadays. I think almost with with what the level of uh, gore in that inner that from what you see almost from a Silence of the Lambs type of angle. Yes, that's a, that's a good point. I can see that as well. I can see that as well. Now, uh, Definitely not Buffalo Bob or Bill, whatever his <laughs> name was, but uh, Debbie did a great job on that role, too. Well, the makeup was great. Uh, was it? Uh, did you have to sit there for a long time? I know it was a lower-budgeted uh, film, but uh, did you still have to sit hours in makeup? Or <coughs> Oh, sure. This first one here, these, I don't know if you probably yeah, see what we brought up. These are just pieces. I had like four or five pieces, and then they put my hands on, which were, we wanted to start out with the mask. Um, This wasn't too bad. The pieces took about 45 minutes, Mm -hmm. and um, uh, it didn't take long at all. The second one was done by Dean Gates, and Dean had to do it himself. So this was about between about two hours and 45 minutes every day. Uh, a lot of intricacies on this. He did. He liked to put the mask on, but liked to do a fresh color <laughs> on everything, and that's what took too long. Uh, a little too long for me. So <laughs> now we come. Thank you. And by the way, this is um, one of my main booking agents. Okay. This is James Decker. He handles a lot of people. I got to throw little Jim's in because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even supposed to be here because I just beat throat cancer. Oh. Well, and my odds were 35 percent survival, and that's why I sound a little bit like Kermit the Frog. But do not worry, my voice is back, and I beat the big C. <laughs> now that's back. Awesome. To, yeah, thank you. I feel good about it. I'm, I'm, I'm a survivor and a fighter. I'm a maniac cop, that's why I think I beat it. Now, you really can't see this too well on Maniac 3, but I had three people working on this mask. They already had it half-colored in, and they had. Um, this took about 45 minutes, but the difference with this one, it's a little more grotesque than the second, but they have fresh blood coming from the face and actually pus. Yeah, and that's a really bad shaving day, I'll tell you, for anybody else um, doing that. But that's the difference in the third one. And um, but and all the stories are different. The third one, um, Bill Lustig, uh, the director, had quit um, about halfway through the movie because he didn't like the way the direction was going with the producers. And then uh, Joel Sasan, uh, the producer, took over directing. It's kind of like uh, a mini uh, cop love story. <laughs> As what you know, I've sure. fallen with the cop and stuff. But um, I like the idea of the, the voodoo in the third one with the hunjin, the, the, the priest, and everything else like that. But uh, I think they're all really suspenseful. And I, I, they're, uh, I actually saw Maniac when I had to do a, um, a Q&A um, in Dubuque. And um, very successful. They packed the place. I was, I was surprised. And I was explaining... A lot of different things uh, to them about and certain things, and uh, it was very interesting. So I just recently saw the whole thing for the first time in a few years, all the way through. I mean, I've done about 140 projects, 150 projects, and I don't even remember some of them. And I'm, even on my resume, I'm finding getting residual checks maybe for 36 cents <laughs> from um, Growing Pains with Brad Pitt when I co-starred on that and other things like that. But it's. Um, um, uh, I just, uh, it was a very success, uh, 
on the last thing, so I really enjoy doing these. Now, you've done uh, many, many projects. The one that's showing here, one of them is Little Creeps. Yeah, and, and how was uh, little working on the set with Little Creeps? You got to work with uh, Joe Estevez and the group? Well, actually, I brought most of the cast in. Oh, you did? I was supposed to play Joe Estevez's role. Oh, okay. Um, he's actually the main lead. I, um, I had just got out of heart failure sure. two years ago. And um, I'm back to normal, so I mean, everything's functioning pretty good for a maniac. Sure. <laughs> but um, 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 this was, um, I, I play a professor, and he's doing another uh, project coming up. Brad Lyon is the producer. And by the way, I have the Red Demon right here with me. Oh, oh that's, oh, you were there. Jimmy, you want to have him here real quick? Uh, oh, there he is. How you doing, folks? Jimmy Decker, the Red Demon on Little Creeps. See his horns coming somewhere. I know that they're in the hotel room yet too. I believe. Sure. No, but uh, I have the famous hands going through the book, going on top of the book, moving my fingers, with the two and a half hour makeup job for one week straight every day. Oh man! <laughs> Thank you, Jim. And then, um, uh, but Brad's coming down uh, later today, and then we're going to do a Q and A on Little Creeps tomorrow as well. Fun movie. Fun movie. It's, uh, I actually did a. I'm, I've got two degrees, one in music and one in voice with uh, uh, voice with acting as my main thing. And I wanted to do something different, so I did. I never get a chance to use my thing, so I played a professor. And I kind of went back and uh, watched some of the old um, Sherlock Holmes films with Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce's Watson. And so um, if you can find a flaw in my accent in this movie, I'd like to know because it was really hard to maintain that all the way through but I thought my accent came out uh, pretty good because it's really hard sometimes to be aware of it. Uh, as an example I was watching The Jackal with Bruce Willis and uh, Richard Gere and there's about six times in there with uh, R Richard Gere going off his accent and when I had just seen that before I did that and I said I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so before each freaking take I, 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 I actually kind of became Dr. Watson on the set because I'm a method actor so I was talking in my accent in English when I was ordering the food not in the room and everything else so I actually became the professor but it's a very very good movie and um, uh, it almost other than having some sex in it it would have been a great children's horror movie I'll be very frank with you but the distributors always have to have sex and everything and uh, it's kind of a shame because um, other than that, this is, it was very entertaining, and um, I had actually forgot they had the sex, and I had my grandkids watching it with my fiance, and we said, why don't you guys, I know you want candy, even though I didn't want them to have any, and um, we should shut it off, and I said there was a glitch in the tape. <laughs> That's great. Uh yeah, I loved your accent in uh, Little Creeps. And uh, did you, did you get to meet? Thank you, oh yeah, you bet. I got that for you. Did you get to meet uh, Jake the Snake Roberts? I did meet Jake the Snake. Um, I used to follow the wrestling quite a bit. Um, I worked in Chicago with uh, uh, Bill Robinette uh, doing some MC stuff uh, while I was taking care of my mom who had cancer back um, uh, early two thousand. Okay. 2001, 2002, he was with Windy City Wrestling, and I got to know some of the guys there. And in California, I know some of them. When I was, I say, I lived there quite a, a long time now, uh, for a while. But um, uh, I didn't. I heard his name, but I've never seen him wrestle or anything. So, uh, but um, he was a big fan of mine. So we exchanged pictures and stuff. <laughs> Now, do you have uh, anything coming up, or are you still just uh, kind of taking it easy? Oh, no, I, 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 um, I, I got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm doing, um, I'm starting Brad's new movie in about a week and a half. It's called Monsters on Main Street. Okay. Um, I'm playing a psychotic mental patient who's the only one who can seem to channel himself to find this killer, and we're shooting that in January called Fear the Reaper. Oh, okay. Uh, we're shooting that in Virginia. I also um, am doing one in Florida called Blood Story. I haven't gotten the script yet, but the deal has been finalized. And it's got, um, I think Tony Todd and Michael Berryman are in it. And the three of us are going to be in that. And uh, 
I don't know the script, but they want me playing a gangster who's a numbers runner, like in the old days, and it's a really good role. Uh, so when I see the script, I'm going to decide how I want to approach it and what I want to do with it. And then the big one, uh, it's in the works, but they've got me secured. Um, it's called The Deformed. Okay. It's with uh, myself, Doug Bradley, um, uh, uh, Michael Berryman, Tony, Sid, uh, Reggie Bannister. It's going to be like, I don't know how we're going to pull this off yet, but <laughs> it's going to be like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, only with the horror guys, and we're going to be going after one other villain, and we're all going to... I just haven't seen the script yet, but it's it sounds interesting, and it's in the product, but they do have a lot of money on this project, and I think that would be kind of interesting to see the maniac and Doug and, Re and just all sitting around the table deciding, like the Justice League, how we're going to go get the son of a bee, you know? Uh, it, but it's called The Deformed, and they plan on... Um, uh, they plan on doing uh, that sometime in the late spring. Sure. So I'm looking forward to that. That's what I got on the boards. And I don't know, I've got a bunch of shows uh, in February already. And uh, I'll be filming in January. So um, I'm pretty booked up as it's going along. It's going really well for me. Well, I look forward to seeing all of those. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's my pleasure.